practicality. Um, so good afternoon, everybody, and thank you very much for joining us um, for the session on applying for an international scholarship. My name is Yuba Bosov. I'm the director of NAFIC NISO South Africa. I'm also a trainer and facilitator that has worked in higher education for the past 10 plus, 15 plus years. I'm getting old now. Um, and uh, we discussed internally that we would really like to provide something that would also assist those of you and those South Africans and Southern Africans that are joining us this afternoon that's interested in applying for a scholarship. On the one hand, to share some information on the scholarships that we have available as an organization, and I'll tell you more about the organization and what we do in a minute, but also as a resource. So um, in today's presentation, We've included various resources that you can use also in going forward in applying for an international scholarship. Um, so I would like to welcome two of my colleagues, uh, Temishu Masejo, who was the one that put this together, uh, and Sanayo Serenia. Maybe you can introduce yourselves. I don't have to do that. You're quite apt in doing that yourself. <laughs> Okay, um, hi guys. Um, my name is Dimisho Mashiro. Um, I'm the Education Promotion Officer for NAFIC NISO uh, South Africa office. So, yeah, I'm the one who put this together. So, uh, basically, my, my, my job is to, to make sure that, you know, the South, Af South, South Southern African uh, students within uh, the SADC region, they, they get uh, exposed to the funding opportunities and, 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 and scholarship opportunities to, to get to study in the Netherlands. So it's an outgoing uh, mobility program. So in part of my activities here at NAFIC is uh, overseeing the Orange Tulip Scholarship, which we'll get into it later on um, during the presentation. So Sinayo, I give it over to you. Thanks, Tumisho. Um, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Sinayo Sekhenya, and I work here at NAFIC NESO South Africa as well. Um, I, I work for the under the Orange Knowledge Program as a program manager for the Orange Knowledge Program, which is abbreviated as OKP. And um, yes, under OKP, we also have scholarships. We have um, individual scholarships for South Africans and, and Africans. We cover in our office um, Southern Africa region, so we promote also scholarships for Southern Africans to go to the Netherlands to undertake short courses and masters. Um, so yes, um, there are opportunities for scholarships as well and OKP and yeah, if, if any of you are interested in them, you can pop us an email to me and then he'll pass on my details to you. Thanks. Tom. All right, over to you, um, Yuba. Fantastic. Thank you so much. What I would really um, like to urge you to do is as we go along, please put any questions that you might have um, in the chat box and we will deal with those. Um, also things that maybe you want you you wish to hear today that you didn't hear about and we can provide follow up on that. Um, you will see that we have started recording this meeting. The main purpose of us recording is to make it available to those that could not join us today. So if you do not wish us to record, you are free to say so and we will not share this with anybody. Um, so please do let us know in the chat. Um, if not, we will share this, but we will make sure that uh, nobody can, can track you and your personal details um, in this process. All right. Then I am going to start uh, and I would like to I'm gonna do it this way. So that I uh, I can at least see, see, see a little bit still. Um, there we go. Now I can still go. Oh, now I'm lying to you. I can't. There we go. All right. Um, so Niall and uh, Tamisho, if there's any questions in the chat, I can't see the chat box. I'm only working on one screen today. So please do give me a shout uh, and I can just work that in and don't wait until the end. Just tell me when it's needed. All right. So let me first start with giving a little bit of background on, on the organization, on NAFIC as an um, organization. We were established as a local office of NAFIC. NAFIC is the Dutch organization for the internationalization of education. And we were established as a local office um, as uh, based on a demand from the Dutch education sector. So 
some of you might know that South Africa and the Netherlands has a really long history of working together in international uh, collaboration in the knowledge sector, looking at student mobility, at research collaboration, um, and also large scale European funded programs. Um, so we were established as a hub on the African continent. And as Tamisho has said earlier, we look at South Africa. Yes, we're based in South Africa, but we also deal a lot with um, other African countries. In Sanayo's portfolio, we deal with South Africa, Mozambique, uh, Zimbabwe, Zambia, and uh, Tanzania. Um, and in some of our scholarship programs, we also look at the rest of Africa. So the key activities that what we refer to as key activities or the main areas that we work in is really around positioning the Dutch knowledge sector. So to say, how do we create meaningful and long term partnerships between the Dutch and the South African knowledge sector? Increasingly, that uh, collaboration also spans to industry. So how do we connect universities and industry to one another? It looks at student mobility. So both Dutch students coming to South Africa, many of those come as interns to South Africa. Some come for master's programs and we provide information on that. And then for the mobility of South African students to the Netherlands, I think the mobility component has become a little bit fluid uh, during the pandemic and it's also very much on virtual opportunities for students. Then we are responsible for the Holland or the Netherlands alumni network. Um, in the past three weeks we hosted three uh, alumni sessions in different cities in South Africa. We were in Durban, Cape Town um, and here in Gauteng. And then we deal with capacity development. So capacity development are mostly programs that are aimed at um, providing skills and knowledge and developing partnerships in skills and knowledge that is beneficial to both South Africa and the Netherlands uh, for predominantly organizations. So usually government departments, knowledge institutions um, as organizations, but then also in some scholarships. And we'll share a little bit about that with you today as well. So. You might ask and maybe when uh, when I'm talking to the group of you, I'm preaching to the converted, but what are the reasons for applying for an international scholarship? And uh, if I look at my own career, I never studied abroad. It's one of the things that I really wish I had done. So now you studied abroad um, for a while and maybe she can share some of her personal experience as well. But it's really about building your CV, uh, about growing your network, um, learning new skills such as language, resilience, one of the things that's for me, although I never studied abroad, important in my work in working in international education is the opportunity that international travel and dealing with diverse um, cultures is the way that I can look at my own country. And that is really part and partial also of what an international scholarship will offer you. If you are on the trajectory to working in a university or being a researcher, uh, pursuing an international scholarship and an international qualification will really be instrumental in your career as well. So when when we apply for international scholarships, there are a few typical things that you can expect to see when um, you look at the application form. And I, I wanted to look at three specific things. The one will be a request for a motivational letter. And today we will spend um, a bit of time looking at the motivational letter because that's really one of the key areas. In my work, I've had the opportunity to read a lot of motivational letters of students that apply for an international scholarship. And this is really crucial in um, determining whether you will be accepted or not accepted into the scholarship. So that is a key one. Apart from um, the obvious things such as your academic record and performance, you will be asked for a motivational letter. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about what this motivational could look like and what kind of things they might ask in the letter. The second very important things when um, applying for an international scholarship that you can expect is that people will ask for references. These references are really important. You might think that you can just add anybody as a reference, but really be intentional um, in who you ask to serve as a reference. Um, for example, uh, when I look at uh, and how this is different from a job application, when I look at a um, job application um, for a position in the office, I 
often look for if people included their previous employ employers. That is, of course, not a given. There's also a bias in that. Um, but when you apply for an international scholarship, one of the considerations when you have more than um, one reference is consider somebody that can say something about your academic performance. This is, of course, an academic application. So first and foremost, you want somebody um, that can speak to your academic abilities and potential and past performance. And I know in South Africa it's quite difficult. If you're in an undergraduate program, you might be one of 300 or one of a thousand people. So how is it even possible that anybody could have noticed you in class if you were not somebody that sat in the fr front row, which now, of course, with online has also changed. It's not so easy to connect with lecturers anymore. But then think, for example, of um, your honours program. If you're in your honours program and you're applying for your master's program, the supervisor for your honours thesis, that's an ideal person to speak to your academic abilities. Also, for example, if you had a tutor, the tutor worked much closer with you. And although the tutor might only have insight into one aspect or one module that you've participated in, this is really important. It's somebody that knows you directly. You're not just a student number on their list, so that's important. But that's on the academic side. You might also have an opportunity to give um, another reference. And so try to balance it. If you already have an academic reference, and the application does not specifically ask for two academic references, which is also a really important tip, and I'll come back to it. Be sure that you give them exactly what they ask for. So if they ask for two references, give them two references. If they ask for an academic reference and a personal reference, give them an academic and a personal reference. Some scholarship programs will also ask that your references send the information directly to them follow up with your references. I've also been asked shamefully to be a reference for somebody and I forget, but I will do it because if I, I promise somebody I'll do it, I'll do it. But remind that person kindly to let you know as soon as I've sent in the reference. And then the third aspect that you can expect when applying for a scholarship, that's not in all scholarships and actually in the ones that we have, none of those scholarships cover an interview, but in some of the high profile, ex um, very competitive scholarships, they will also ask you to do an interview or even multiple interviews. So that is quite important. OK, is everybody still with me? Yay, yeah. yeah. OK, great. So I want to um, pause a little bit at the aspects of what goes into writing a motivational letter and something that um, you should be clear on if you have perhaps already started working and you now want to um, do a, a further degree. A motivational letter and a cover letter is not the same thing. Because very often I get a motivational letter and it reads like a cover letter. A motivational letter is really um, a succinct, well construction, intentional document where you state your case. Why should I pick you? And why should I pick you for this scholarship? And this is where you have to look very carefully at who's providing the scholarship. What are you applying for? Is there in the scholarship statement anything specific? Um, you might also find that they do not ask you for a motivational letter, but they ask you for a scholarship essay. That's not common in the Netherlands. In the Netherlands, they ask you for a motivational letter, but um, as this is about the Netherlands and some, if you apply to the US, they will apply, they will ask you for an essay, a scholarship essay. And this essay usually has a topic. Um, and it's a little bit less about you, but in that essay, you need to make your opinion clear, which in turn then gives you some insight into who's the person on the other side. So when you start writing a motivational letter, plan this letter very careful, carefully. Don't just sit down and whack it out one evening. Um, usually what happens to Misha and I had this discussion yesterday, the day before the scholarship closes, you think, oh, I'm going to write this motivational letter now and send it. Yes, we've all been in that boat, 
but this is really important. Think carefully about what you wish to portray in your motivational letter. What is the story that you are telling and how do you show? Because remember, that person reading the motivational letter, they don't know you. They have not seen you. They have in front of you, um, an app, uh, front of them an application. Um, they can make their own conclusions based on the content. They can look at your academic performance, but they don't know you as a person. And the motivational letter is that opportunity where you present yourself. But make it short. Nobody wants to read a five page motivational letter. I promise you, even if it's well written, even the most seasoned evaluator stops after page two, maybe. Hmm? So it's really important that you make this tight. One page, uh, one and a half. I'm hesitant to say two pages because then you start to just put words on paper for the sake of putting words there. But also be sure that if they ask you for a longer motivation, then adhere to that criteria. Those details on being sure that you provide the scholarship um, granting organization what they are looking for is also important. So if they ask you to perhaps, I've seen these as examples, to say um, write half a page on why you are the perfect candidate, write half a page on your academic experiences and write half a page about why this scholarship is important for South Africa. OK, do that. Don't write five pages on the one and leave the other questions out. Then it's zero. It's literally as when you would have written in the exam and you didn't answer that question, it's zero. Yeah? And potentially you get an evaluator that's now annoyed by what you've provided. Also consider the um, the format that you use. In most cases, you can use a formal letter layout that is addressed at somebody. If you know um, if there was a reference name, add that reference, say, dear Mrs. Bosov or dear Yuba, comma, Mrs. Bosov, whatever you want to use. Um, depending, it also depends a little bit in the Netherlands. They're not that formal on titles. Write a formal letter. No? Then consider your structure. There's usually two, way, two main ways to go about it. No? You can either go quite tight, yeah? three parts, introduction, main body, conclusion, or you can divide that main body into two or three shorter paragraphs. But be sure that those are not just single sentences hanging around. Eh? So it's really important to consider um, your use of language, the grammar, um, the construction of sentences, the flow of your document. All right, so that is just some basics on... Somebody shouting at me. There we go. Sorry, there we go. Uh, I have now muted everybody, so sorry. Let me just go back. I don't think that you can see this anymore. Hey. There we go. OK, let's do it this way. OK, is this good again? Can you see this? Yes, it's visible. OK. Thanks, Tamisha. All right, so let's look at. Uh, yes, we will share the video I just saw in the chat. We will most definitely share this video afterwards as well. So let's talk a little bit about the introduction. The introduction needs to be very short. This is really where you have to capture the reader. So try and write it in a way that's creative. So that somebody says, oh, I want to learn more about this person. Let me read the rest of your letter. So things that you can include is. A very short, who are you and what do you want to do? Um, dear so and so, my name is Yuba Bosov and I'm applying for a doctoral for the doctoral program in international education at such and such institute. No, um, 
then you can so it can be cut quite um short no and to the point and this will lead into the rest of your um your letter it's really important to consider uh, what is the main message that you would like to convey through this um, letter? What What is the spirit that you want to give? And so think of that already in your first um, sentence. Then the main body, this is where it becomes fun. Because remember, as I said, it's really important that you don't go on and on and on and delve into um, something very long that deters from your main message and that um, does not really share the story. So think of the type of scholarship that you are applying for. So when we look at the NRF NAFIC doctoral scholarship, for example, and I'll tell you more about that in a little bit, we look at what is the contribution that this applicant wants to make to the research environment in South Africa? What are the fields of study that they are interested? What is the research problem that they wish to address? And when I say that, also be carefully careful that you are not writing um, your uh, research paper yeah? or that you are exploring your research. You're giving a short insight into what you want to do. So, for example, you can um, share something about your passion. Maybe the scholarship that you are applying for is part of your passion. Yeah? Uh, veterinary sciences, for example, and you want to study veterinary science at Utrecht University, and this has been your dream to pursue a master's degree in veterinary sciences, and your passion for animals started when you grew up, yeah? whatever. I'm making stories up as I go along. So that's important. Don't make up stories. Be truthful in your application. Then also um, you can tell them a little bit about what makes you different different than your peers, for example. Why should I, let's say, let's take the team, for example, why should I apply, um, appoint Sanaya or why should I give the scholarship instead of the mission? You know, is it because of your years of experience, for example, that you maybe work and now want to study again? Maybe you did something interesting. Uh, maybe you have achievements that you would like to highlight. Then this can all go into the main body. Um, here you can also say why this scholarship? Why do you want this particular scholarship and not the one at another university? Why this particular country? Why do you wish to study in the Netherlands um, and not in Belgium for that matter? And then how to draw it together? Um, you should not repeat in your conclusion everything that you've already said in the main body. Hmm? So you can make bold statements in your conclusion. I am the best candidate XYZ. Draw one point. And this is really your last chance to make a good impression. Hmm? Like I said, in a motivational letter, you want to tell a story and be sure that the closing and the conclusion really rounds up your, um, your story. And that when I close this as an evaluator, I close this application. Tonight, when I lie in bed, this is the letter that comes to mind. All right. OK, so these are some of the tips um, and maybe you cannot read all of this so clearly, but this has been put together um, by Go Abroad. Go Abroad is an international company that focuses mostly on international studies in the um, USA. They also do a lot of short programming, but they are very well known also for providing scholarship for short term experiences and they have these seven tips um, and some of this I've already said and so let me reiterate a few of those things. The first thing for you to consider when applying for a scholarship uh, is am I eligible? So read through the entire scholarship document and literally tick off. Yes, I meet the academic requirements. I meet in most cases for international scholarship, the nationality requirement. Um, in some cases, I meet the age requirement, as the case is in some of the scholarships that we have. Or I have the relevant work experience. In the Orange Knowledge Program, there's a minimum requirement for work experience. So check all of these things before you even start applying for the scholarship, because it will just be thrown out. All right. Make sure that you know all of the deadlines that's involved in applying for this scholarship. 
usually there is an academic check that could happen even prior to you submitting the final application. There will be a deadline for references to be submitted, and then there will be a deadline for you submitting the scholarship. Now, one of the key things here and key mistakes that I've seen is if you send in an application late, it's a no. They will not accept the late application one. And having a time difference is no excuse. So people don't consider a time difference. So when you're applying for a scholarship, make sure if there's a time engaged. So very often in the European programs, it says Central European time. That is different in South Africa at some part in some time of the year. So be sure that you submit the right time. I've already discussed the recommendations, but these really matter. So think carefully about who you ask. Really pick somebody that you think can make a positive contribution to your application. Answer the questions. So if they have specific questions, don't repeat yourself. Consider um, what you want to say and ask the answer the questions directly. Do not send the same application to different scholarships. It's very easy to pick up that this scholarship application was not written for this specific um, scholarship request. Sometimes students are as lazy as to not even change the name. So be sure that you put the effort in to write a motivational letter, to write an application that is aimed at that specific scholarship. Ask a friend to read it. I know it's not easy to always give yourself, so to say, to somebody else to read, but it's really important that somebody else that is not as emotionally and um, invested in this, because of course, when you apply for a scholarship, there's a lot at stake. So ask somebody else to read it. Ask a friend, ask a partner, ask your mom or dad to go through it and say, this works, this does not work. I don't understand what you mean here. This isn't clear. And very importantly, yes, I think this is an accurate reflection of you. OK. Don't wait until the night before. I call it the last minute dot com. Do not do that. Start working in time. Plan your scholarship um, deadlines. Plan what you want to do and plan the activity so that you know that you are submitting the best possible application. All right. Any questions on this? Otherwise, we will share a little bit information with you on different types of scholarships um, and also scholarships that we have available at the moment or will have very soon. Anybody? We good. All right. So three scholarships opportunities that um, are run through our office. So let me be clear, this does not mean these are the only scholarships available to study in the Netherlands. These are scholarships that we are responsible for as Nafik Niso South Africa um, and where you can ask directly to us for also advice on how to apply for this scholarship. And this is the Orange Tulip Scholarship. The Mishu is responsible for the, there we go. Um, the Mishu is responsible for the Orange Tulip Scholarship. Then there's the NRF NAFIC Doctoral Program. I'm responsible for the implementation of that. And the Orange Knowledge Program Scholarship, Sanayo is responsible uh, for that program. So let's briefly look at these three. Um, the Orange Tulip Scholarship is an annual scholarship. Um, and it is open to both universities and universities of applied sciences from the Netherlands side. The content of the scholarship and the scope of the scholarship is determined by the Dutch institution. So the university actually tells us they will offer a scholarship for the following programs. Sometimes it's on bachelor's level, sometimes it's on master's level, never on PhD level for the Orange Tulip Scholarship, and also the amount of the scholarship. And th these differ. Some uh, of the Orange Tulip Scholarship is a, a reduction in fees. Some of it is a, um, a full scholarship or full tuition scholarship. Uh, and so it really determines. So we are currently waiting for the new call for 2021-2022 to be launched. We expect that to be in November. Um, 
This is the SADIC scholarship, so it's um, open to students depending on their eligibility from the SADIC region and it's administered through our office and you can find more information on this on the study in Holland website and for being here today, Tumishu will also let you know when this scholarship um, program will open. Then there is the NRF NAFIC doctoral program. We're currently in the last year. The goal of this program was to grant 50, 50 PhDs um, from the period 2017 to 2021 with those selected in this year to finish in 2025. Um, so far, we've only awarded 21 scholarships. The call for this year is closed and we really do hope that we're going to make target. Um, this is a fully covered scholarship that is co-funded between South Africa and the Netherlands and it's only for doctoral candidates. So if you are planning to do a PhD in the future, please keep your eye on this. We do plan to have a new program that will launch in 2022. It sounds funny to already be so far ahead in terms of years, but indeed we're almost in 2022. Then the Orange Knowledge Program, very exciting program because this is aimed at mid-career professionals. So it's for people that have started working and then say, oh, but I actually want to refresh my skills or I want to learn a new skill or I want to um, um, amend my knowledge to be more in line. Then there are two options. There's the short courses and there are master's programs. So Sanayo, please um, add where I miss. In South Africa, we look at um, the fields of broadly agriculture or food and nutrition security, as well as water sector. There is a call open. It's a little bit tight. It closes next week, but there will be more calls in next year and we will be sure to share that information with you. If you are curious to see what is available, you can also go to study in Holland uh, and then follow the OKP link and you'll see everything that's available in the school and get an idea of what's going on. But very importantly, yes, we promote studying in the Netherlands and we promote the scholarships and support the scholarship programs, but there are also many other resources for finding a scholarship. And so if you look at these scholarships, but none of them fit with what you want to do, um, there are a few options for you to go about it and we've included it here. The one is the Department of Higher Education Scholarship Calendar. There are loads, loads and loads of scholarships that is determined between different countries and South Africa. And these scholarships are administered by our ministry, Department of Higher Education and Training here in South Africa. Um, and they run various cycle, cycles. Some are for a master's program, some are for PhD, they are bachelor's program, and it goes from all over, from the USA all the way to China and everything in between. So you are most welcome to use this link. This goes to the scholarship calendar of DHET. There's also contact details there, but this is really a very useful resource for you to look at. The other organizations that offer scholarships are foundations. So these foundations are sometimes linked to a companies, for example, the First Rand Foundation, whom we have a partnership or developing partnership with. So they offer scholarships to deserving candidates to study abroad. Um, there are also other foundations that you can look into, but this is a very good source um, of looking for funding for an international studies. Then there's the university website um, of the university that you wish to apply for. Dig deep. There are many scholarships that you can find on the university websites that are specific to that institution. So universities have the discretion to use money um, or to use part of their money in a way to support students. And that can be for any reason. It can be because they want more South African students to study at a particular university. It can be because somebody left them money for students from agriculture to study at their university. So really look at the universities. Usually there's a page for scholarships and you can find the information there. Um, and then there's of course country agencies such as ourselves. Yes, of course, we are for the Netherlands and we'll tell you a little bit more about studying in the Netherlands in general. Um, but there are also other country agencies where you can find out on what those countries offers for South African students to study at their knowledge institutions. Okay, Tamisho, can I give it to you? 
Oh, thanks, Yuba. Uh, thank you so much. Um, yeah, uh, you know, uh, taking from what Yuba has said already, you know, there's, there's more reasons actually for you guys to consider uh, studying in the Netherlands. It's actually, I've never been there before. Hopefully, in the near future, I'll be there. But um, it's an interesting country. So there's a video that um, I would like to share with you guys. It's a 100 second video. It's not long. It's just to give you an idea of what is it like to actually consider Netherlands as your destination for your studies. So let me just. I think I can play it from here if it's OK. Please, please, Yuba, play from your side. With all said, guys, um, I would like to uh, invite you guys to actually check out our social media spaces. We are on Facebook, we are on Twitter, we are on Instagram, we are on LinkedIn. We are also on YouTube. It's uh, our handle is at Study in Holland. You can also uh, frequent our webpage, uh, studyinholland.nl. And for any queries relating to uh, funding opportunities, scholarships, you can send us an email on info at nesosouthafrica.org or you can send an email uh, personally to myself. Uh, my email address is tmashiho at nesosouthafrica.org and we'll handle every query that you have relating to the work that we do with the site. So I would like to uh, thank Yuba uh, for, for actually giving us this good presentation and Sinayo for being part of this and also I would like to thank you guys uh, for, 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 for joining us this afternoon. And if you have any questions, we can take them now. Do you still have time, Yuba, right? I do. Yes, we do. Please fire away. Definitely. There was a reason why you came this afternoon, why you made this time available. So if there's any questions that you have, um, anything that you want to ask about applying for a scholarship, one of the ones that we've presented, or maybe something else that you had in mind, please do feel free to Ask us. You are most welcome to contact us. Ah, oh, there we go. Francois. Hi, hi everybody. Um, yeah, can you hear me? Yes. OK. Um, who's on the selection committee for, let's say, the OTA scholarship? Um, <laughs> is that is there, you know, personnel from the university? or the institution that I'm looking to attend, or is it only 
within like your organization? So actually with the OTS, we don't take part in the selection. What we do is we do the um, uh, the criteria check. So we make sure that whatever is presented is meets the criteria of the scholarship and then it's up to the university. And so with the OTS, there's a, usually a scholarship officer that looks at it as well as the academic department. So it's not a unilateral decision. There's usually multiple um, people involved in this. In OTS, it's the academic department, so where you apply. So in the Dutch system, there's a kind of a program committee that will look at it. And then there's a separate scholarship officer that's responsible for the success of the scholarship at the university. OK, great. Thank you so much. Welcome. Anything else? Then I think we can close this. We will upload this to our YouTube channel where you can also find other videos on, on webinars about studying in the Netherlands and our programs. Uh, please feel free to reach out to us. We will let you know as soon as the call for OTS has been launched and we look forward to a lot of applications. Please share also with your friends um, that there are these opportunities available. Thank you for joining us. Neville, do you still have a question? Hello, Neville, can you hear us? I'm not sure if Neville can hear us because he raised so. his hand. Neville, do you maybe want to put it in the chat? Okay, um, I'm not sure. Yeah. Should we give it another minute? Mm -mm. It's up to apply for this scholarship. Ask again. Neville? Hello, Neville. We can see you. Okay, um, I don't think, uh, I think Francois, we can stop it. Yeah, I think we can uh, we'll stop this meeting right now. So guys, um, we will send a follow up email uh, with the details of this uh, meeting, the recording and also the slide that we, we presented here with. So you guys, whoever who was not uh, clear with certain information can refer back and uh, uh, be clear about it. So thank you so much guys for joining us today and Wish you all the best with your applications and yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. Bye.